Today I fucked up by accidentally severely bottlenecking my PC for over 3 years. Too long didn't read, at bottom, I waffled. I built my first ever PC around 3.5 years ago. It's pretty budget but I thought for the £500 I was spending on parts, it would be pretty decent. So I follow a couple of YouTube tutorials to build it and everything worked fine first try, to my absolute surprise. Over the course of the three years, I've never had one problem with it other than it was pretty slow and could only run games on low or medium at best, depending on the age of the game. It would take quite a long time to boot, and usually I'd have to let it warm up for a minute or so till I could open browsers or do stuff without apps crashing. Was not ideal to say the least. Cut to two weeks ago, a friend was telling me about the new RAM he just got, which got me thinking about my little old PC and how it's three years old and how it could maybe use a few cheap upgrades. The first thing I look at when I open up my PC is the 8GB stick of RAM. Some of you may see where this is going, cause I only have two RAM slots, and he looked so lonely, so thought I'd look into a second stick to keep him company. After a bit of RAM research, I started seeing the words dual channel a lot, so delved a bit deeper. I read more and more about how people in similar situations to mine should have originally went with 2x4GB instead of 1x8GB if your motherboard supports dual channel cause it's magic. I'm reciting stuff I have no idea about, I could be wrong here, and that you should try and use the same manufacturer slash frequency if you're going to get multiple sticks. I found the same model of RAM on eBay for less than £30 a week or so ago, so I ordered it. It arrived today. I plugged it in and immediately thought I'd try and load up something that used to crash my PC hard, a large map on Rust. The large map, which previously suplexed my PC, loaded in faster than a small map used to with one stick of RAM, and was running at a solid 60 FPS while running around chopping stuff. No crashes, no screen tearing, just a working game. So, I re-downloaded WoW which I haven't played for a year or so, but I could only run it on medium graphics with sun shafts slash shadows off if I wanted anywhere close to 60 FPS. I logged on and fiddled around with the settings and turns out my PC is capable of running the game on high, with sun shafts slash shadows on high, at an unmoving 60 FPS. All it took was another stick of RAM to make my PC not a piece of shit. I'm in disbelief at how my PC is now like twice as good, and at how it now feels like I've been using half a PC for three years. I'm such an idiot. Too long didn't read, seemingly badly bottlenecked my PC by only using one stick of RAM instead of two. It went from really shit to really not shit 3.5 years too late. I am idiot. Not as bad as the guy who bought an expensive GPU, thought it was crap for years, replaced it, noticed no performance gain then finally found out he had plugged the monitor into the onboard GPU output and had never used his actual GPU or the new one since buying them. It was on Reddit somewhere with the full story, so yeah. Mistakes were made, don't feel bad. Not an idiot, you just didn't know. But now you do and have learned a valuable lesson. Awesome. Ha. We all do shit like this, no matter how many builds you do you'll still make mistakes. Check out on r slash Terrace how often people do stuff like not remove plastic seals on heat sinks. Glad you got it sorted to buddy. Dual channel versus single channel actually isn't that big of a difference. You probably were running into an issue with RAM usage overall, not enough RAM so Windows has to use a page file and things slow down. Having 16 GB of RAM probably solved most of your problems. Today I fucked up by attending my sister's wedding. Obligatory throwaway account and this happened last weekend, but I'm only discovering the total impact today. My sister's wedding was last weekend. During a hurricane slash tropical storm thing. I haven't lived in my hometown for several years, so hurricane slash tropical storm survival skills are a little rusty. My best friend drove, as I had flown in for the event and didn't rent a car. As we are about to leave, I remember that my lipstick 
is in the house, and in case they want to do pictures at the reception or after the ceremony, I need to be prepared. I run back in the house, grab my lipstick, run back down the driveway, and open the door to my friend's car. In the three seconds that I stopped to open the door, my legs suddenly felt like they were on fire. So when the door opens, I'm screaming I'm on fire. And my best friend looks totally befuddled as there is no evidence of anything burning. Three seconds later, I realize I have been swarmed by fire ants. Fire ants. In my shoes. In my clothes. In my hair. In the car. Hundreds of them. My best friend and I are frantically trying to get these ants off of me and out of the car. I run back in the house, and rinse my feet off in the bathtub. My feet are starting to swell. Throw on a pair of slip-on casual shoes because my now swelling feet won't fit in the shoes I brought to wear to the wedding. Get to the wedding, 10 minutes late, with whelps erupting all over my feet, legs and fingers. Found an ant crawling on my arm in the church. Now, you know how when you've been itching all over you start to itch in places that shouldn't be itching? Like a phantom itch. Okay, so, I had an itch in my crotch during the wedding and reception. Yeast infection? No. Probably just a phantom itch because my entire body is itching from the 45 or so bites. Or so I thought. A couple days later, I return home and me and the hubs have sexy time. He says you okay? Things felt kind of hard. I made some joke about getting old. Well, during my shower, I also realize things are hard. I intrepidly take a very graphic selfie to investigate fire ant bites on my inner labia. There is no WebMD entry for how to treat fire ant bites on genitalia. Too long didn't read. Went to sister's wedding, came home a fire crotch. Fire ants swarmed during heavy rain, kiddos. Edit, RIP my inbox. Some items to clarify. 1. Bites are healing. Even those bites. 2. Regarding attending a wedding in a pandemic, all of the venues limited the number of guests to under 50, even outdoors. The church holds 1,100 people so all of us basically had a pew to ourselves during the ceremony. The reception venue holds 200, only 40 or so people attended. Half of the attendees stayed in one section of the venue watching football on a big screen TV. Again, limited contact. And masks and sanitizer were available throughout the venues for people that didn't bring their own. 3. Yeah. I know, weddings are the new super spreader events and the decision to attend was not made lightly. I did spend all day Saturday before the wedding with my dad, helping him get ready, watching football, and going through his old high school yearbooks reminiscing about his friends and his memories. His wish was to have all of us together for a happy event one last time, COVID be damned. He gets tested approximately once a month as well. So far, he's still negative. 4. Fire ants form ant rafts in water as they try to escape their flooded mounds during heavy rain. Car was in the driveway. Ants had aggregated in a puddle next to the car, and that is what I stepped in. 5. Yes, I know whelps are puppies. However, my very southern dad has called whelps whelps my whole life force of habit. I'm keeping it. Wait. So how did said ants get to be all over you? Well, the upshot is you've earned one hell of a nickname, Fire Crotch. ETA, ladies and germs, thank you for making this my top comment. Thank you for the awards. I never dreamed I could sort of such karmic heights on a cheap joke with a punchline I stole directly from up. How did sexy time not hurt you? That sounds painful, did. But, again, getting older, things aren't always as pliable, even with lots of lube, sometimes. And I just chalked it up to that. I usually use a bidet and use a handheld in the shower instead of a washcloth to clean my bits. Today, though, I happened to use a washcloth and discovered the hardness my hubs mentioned. I got swarmed by them once when I was a kid. I'd sat down on a big rock in the yard and all of a sudden started shrieking at the top of my lungs in pain. My mother picked me up and threw me into the tub to hose me down. 32 years later and I'm still afraid to sit on the ground without doing a hefty inspection beforehand. I'm told that when I was about 3 and we lived in MS I was left alone in the backyard. 
and apparently to a three-year-old a fire ant mound looks like a sandbox. Similar story from there. I don't actually remember the event, but I have always had a strong dislike of ants. Most critters I'm alive and let live kind of guy, but ants, go straight to hell do not pass go. She got a NTS in her pants. Today I fucked up by listening to my dick instead of my doctor. Okay it was Friday, not today, but close enough. I had a vasectomy last Tuesday, and my doctor told me to wait a week at least before masturbating slash having sex. As someone who has a high sex drive, this was a tall order, and despite the incredible bruising and pain of the first two days, I found myself absurdly horny. My wife enjoyed my pain immeasurably and teased me a lot by whipping out her boobs regularly, knowing I was powerless to do anything about it. So Friday morning, things were still a bit tender, but I had decided that the surgeon clearly didn't know anything and that the internet, which said whenever you feel up to it was a more reliable source of info. That morning while my wife was taking our daughter to school I decided to take my dick and balls for a test ride. Everything was going really well, and I'd gotten all set up at my wife's desk and was making it a really special wank, just the right video selection, lube etc, and just as I came, everything started to go wrong. Firstly, a week's worth of jizz, some weird clear liquid and a little blood from my op came gushing forth, overwhelming my poorly prepared fold of toilet paper that normally suffices, spilling everywhere, including into my wife's net fabric chair cushions. Simultaneously, my balls start to ache like hell. By the afternoon my balls had swollen up and every time I stood up it was like someone was pulling strings attached to rusty knives somewhere in my crotch, and my balls generally felt like they'd had a good kicking. This persisted for about 5 days, and now on Thursday they are just about back to normal. TL, drive, jerked off before the doctor said I should after a vasectomy, jizzed cum and blood everywhere and made my balls hurt like hell for nearly a week. Listen to your surgeon slash doctor. Edit, to answer the most common questions. My wife thought I was an idiot, but is a lovely woman and was mostly concerned for my nuts well-being. But only because she doesn't know about the chair. The chair, and my balls, are all fine now. Yes I'm gross, I know. I love cannibal corpse. And yes I'm aware of the song. Thank you everyone for sharing your vasectomy stories, many of which had me in stitches, no I didn't have stitches before you crack a joke about that. Your wife is the evil hero of this story. You have no idea. Last week my wife was more seductive than I've ever seen her. I didn't realize I'd married a sadist. My dad had a vasectomy after having me, and did the deed with my mom against doctor's recommendation. Next thing you know I have a little brother. Just because the factory stopped production doesn't mean the warehouse is empty. And you didn't call the doctor did you? I did after a couple days. I thought I'd broken my balls. Deed for the surgery site might be infected so I should really try calling again in case I need antibiotics. Fuck, that's exactly what I said. I had to think about a friend of mine who decided to have a, religiously motivated, circumcision at age 25 or thereabout. Couldn't piss without pain for two weeks I believe, and bent over every time he got a stiffy. Yeah that sounds worse.